Hi. So with the snap around the corner, what I'm going to discuss out here is a snap paper strategy. So how can you plan your paper in the examination to you know perform the best? I mean, strategy becomes one of the very important aspects of cracking the examination. If you have a proper strategy in place, you can really do well in any exam, be it CAT, be it NMAT, be it SNAP. Strategy is what you need to build in over a period of time. I mean, based on the paper pattern, based on different things. So here in this, there to guide you with regards to the paper strategy, what you can follow for the SNAP exam. So let's understand a paper pattern first. So we have uh, English, which is 15 questions, logic, 25 questions, mathematics, which is 20 questions. Total time is 60 minutes. There is one mark correct answer and 0.25 negative marks. So I'll come back to uh, another video where I'll tell you about whether to mark blindly or not. That is a different section. This is we we'll focus on the paper strategy per se. So what are the main ideas of forming a strategy? First, there's no section cut off in SNAP. So that means when you're making a strategy for a SNAP exam, you should focus on a strong area because that's where you'll get your marks. Okay, especially if you're strong in one area and weak in second area, this is what you need to do. Second, speed-based test. That means when in a speed-based test, you should always try to maximize your marks per minute. So in this case, you should always try to solve questions that don't take time and leave questions that take time. So that's a basic idea of the strategy overall. So any question that don't take time, please solve fast, even if you're not good at it. For example, there will be antonyms, synonyms that don't take time. Please solve it immediately. Okay. But there will be question maybe like reading comprehension, which takes more time. Keep it for a later or leave it. I mean, that's the basic idea. Always focus on first solving question which don't take time. Okay. And then maybe coming back to questions that take time. Go to all the sections. We don't know which section will be tough or which section will be easy. Like last year, there was uh, one section which was really tough, one section which was very easy. If your strong area is tough, then you may suffer. So look at all the sections. Ensure but that you take more time in your strong area and lesser time on your weak area when you go through it, okay, glance through it. And speed-based test, one more thing is you can leave questions without reading. Normally in an exam like CAT, etc., we do recommend you to you know, go to the paper and uh, try to look at solving it. In a sense, like read every question because you have enough time. Here in the speed-based test, you don't have time. So it means based on the length of the talk and the topics you're not comfortable, you can leave. So for example, if say RC takes long time and uh, accuracy is low, you can maybe leave it without reading. Same way, there could be some type of logic question which you may find long and not comfortable leave. There's no harm in leaving questions that takes time and you're not comfortable with. So that you can use that time to question that you can solve or which are easy. So I'll talk about two strategy out here. The first strategy is uh, first stage, half an hour. So here you spend more time on your strong area and less time on your weak area. I've given a rough timing, but you plan your own time, okay, based on your response. So based on this, you'll in stage one, you will spend half an hour as such, in which five minutes will be on verbal. So you may solve seven to eight questions which don't take time, as I said, antonym, synonym, grammar, etc. Or you may skip the reading comprehension and parajambles, which normally takes time or where the accuracy is low. Okay, ensure that in this case, you solve only the easy questions first up, first stage. Don't look at medium and uh, next 15 minutes, maybe you can go to logic, go to all the questions. Again, pick up seven to eight questions, easy questions and solve it. Okay, and rest of the questions you can mark whether you want to come back to it in the second stage or leave it. 10 minutes count, solve around five questions. Now, again, I've given a distribution of time. You can have your own distribution. For example, if you're really weak in count, Maybe you can finish your count in five minutes. Just glance through it. Only question which you feel you can solve, solve it, else leave it. I mean, that's lesser time on the area which you're weak at, more time in the area where you're strong at. Let's be very clear with that. Okay. And you should also, when you're solving the other questions, you should mark the questions that you should, you will come back in the second round. So as when you're going through, if you, oh, this is a question, I think I can come back in the second round, I can solve it. So mark it. Maybe write the question number maybe in your uh, rough sheet. That should also do. Right? So you know where to come. So stage two half an hour, you will come back to the medium level sums and solve. Please. So first time I go to the entire paper, I understand the entire paper, which section is tough, which section is easy and try to solve and uh, mark which I come back to it later and stage two will come back to medium level sums and solve. That's how I will plan the entire paper. So uh, 
coming to strategy two. In the strategy two, here you'll spend more time in stage one. That means you solve all the easy and medium sums both in the uh, first stage. Now I kept 45 to 50 minutes because some people keep 60 minutes in the stage one. Let's like complete 60 minutes. But I don't recommend that. I normally prefer spending little less than 60 minutes. So by chance, if you extend some time in between, you still have some buffer time to go to the entire paper. If you spend exact 60 minutes on the entire paper, you may spend some extra time in between, which will ensure that you don't see the last few sums. And if they're easy, you will miss out on the marks. So 45 to 50 minutes for the stage one, you can spend 10 minutes on verbal, try to solve all your questions, right? 25 minutes logic, 15 minutes con. Again, this is a rough estimate. I mean, you'll change the time limit based on your strength. Suppose I'm strong in con, I'll spend more time on con and less time on logic. Or if I find con easy, I will solve more con and less logic. So it will all vary based on how much time that you have. You will try to solve all the questions, but leave out tough questions. Remember that. Leave tough questions. Don't try to solve tough questions as such. You can mark some that you may come back to later. In the last 10 minutes, if you have time, and you want to come back to, you can mark a few sums which you think it is going to take me time, I'll come back to the second term. But yeah, here you'll try to solve more number of questions than what you do in the strategy one because you're going to spend more time on the stage one. Stage two, maybe the last 10 minutes, the sum that you marked, you can come back to it and solve. So the whole idea is that you go to the entire paper, spend more time on your strong area, spend less time on your weak area. It's okay to go to the entire con section in five minutes and leave it if you want, if you're really weak at it. Same bit. If I'm weak at verbal and I feel I'm not going to score in RCs and parajambles, I may skip it, which is also possible. So that is a diff that you will have to base your strategy based on your strengths and weakness and where you're good at and where you're weak at. But the logic is there's no set single cutoff. So try to maximize your overall marks. So look at these two strategies, see which you're comfortable with, and accordingly you can decide what you want to follow.